on this trip we had to do a lot of trail clearing to get to where we were going and that got me thinking and I realized that as overlanders we are often asked how did you get there or how did you find that spot or where is that location so in this video I thought it would be worthwhile to talk about how we plan for our overlanding trips I think you're going to be surprised at some of the things I have to say on this topic so please understand that this is just what we do. It's not an instructional video. Do what's right for you and always be safe. I'm going to approach the topic of planning for an overlanding trip by going over the list of five things we do not do. I call them the five no's. And the first of those is no destination. On this trip, we had absolutely no ultimate destination in mind. All we knew is that we were going to enter the National Forest on the road you see in the video. And for us, the process of discovery is the adventure. So with no destination in mind, here's what happened on this trip. We discovered and explored this cave. We chainsawed and winched our way through overgrown trails. We found an historic site that was open for camping. We cleared some more trails. We found an amazing riverside campground. We had some tight squeezes and one minor injury. We had some great food, especially for dinner, and we had some fun getting my truck unstuck. We made a new forerunner friend. And finally, we found this amazing site for future dispersed camping. So all of this just sort of developed in the moment in real time. We just drove down this road and as we got to intersections, we decided in the moment to turn left or right. We usually opt for the less traveled road so things got more and more overgrown. Doing this, we found old shelters, fire towers, old homesteads, great dispersed camping sites. And on this trip, we stumbled onto this historic site Dispersed camping was allowed here, and it was the only big open flat area we'd seen in miles. So we got our propane fire started and started cooking dinner. And this actually brings me to the second no on our list, and that is no established campgrounds. That's how you put steak. Steve is the master chef, and that was his steak. I just kind of do it old style. Uh, Sam's actually a great cook, but he often goes for the burrito brick, as he did in this case. In the morning we packed up and left and hit the trails again to see where the road would take us. And I do want to mention that yes, we are aware of our fuel range, and yes, we use Gaia and Onyx uh, navigation, and yes, we have recovery gear and we're prepared for emergencies, but for us these vehicles are built to take us places that are a little bit more remote and isolated. And so we set out on this day actually trying to find our way to a ridge top. We found instead this cave, which was pretty cool to find. And now a pro caving tip I learned the hard way. If you go into a dark oh, place, geez. don't forget a flashlight. You know what, I thought for sure I had it. All right, it's your light, it's your light. <laughs> this is mine? You can have it. The cave really was pretty amazing. I have to say it was a great find. I've been in a fair number of caves. Here's some old photos from different caves. Steve and I used to rappel into these and then we would rock climb up the side to get out of the cave. Anyway, back to the cave we found on our overlanding trip. The cool thing about this particular cave was that it had these open areas in the ceiling that just brought in all this natural light. And while we're looking at some of the inside of the cave, I want to mention that the no destination, no campsite approach is really ideal for either a weekend or a three or four day trip. If you're doing an expedition trip, that's a whole different ball game and it does require some significant planning. Now, as we come out of the cave, we hiked back to our vehicles and we met another guy there this is him with a very nice toyota his is the white forerunner right there and it turns out that he's a professional quality photographer and he took this picture of the cave he's on instagram he has a website for his photography 
and he also has a YouTube channel for his Forerunner, all worth checking out. And his links are in the description below. So we hit the road again and turned on to some spur roads and we were quickly back into the thick stuff. And this brings me to number three on the list of no's, and that is no hurry. And by that I mean we have no time frame. We just like to be in the moment and explore, have fun, and see what we find. There's gonna be some pinstriping here. See my right side, Sam? Yeah. Yeah, you got it. Six inches. We are on one of those trails with brush and twigs on both sides. I can, I'm grimacing because I can hear the pinstriping as I'm talking. And it's one of those that just gets tighter as you go. No, not in front of me. Just maybe hop out. We're almost back to the other road. Yeah, I just don't know if we can fit through here. Nothing the trail ammo can't handle. That's not looking very passable. Let's get rid of these two. This is a uh, dead tree. Oh, you know what? I could pull it over. This Holy. is This is superhuman strength. Oh my God. Oh, it's out from the ground. So people wonder why we do this, but I have to say we actually really enjoy using all the tools that come with our vehicles. This is, a ridiculously sharp uh, Swedish axe that I had professionally sharpened. <laughs> so I can attest that it is actually sharp. Here's my brother calling me out for my axe safety violation. That works. So we have a blow down in the way. Should be a simple matter of just winching it real quick since it's pretty much cracked in the middle. If we have any problems with that, we will get the chainsaw out. Sam will get the rigging done on this using a soft shackle. And then in short order, we'll have this tree out of the way. This is one of several trees that we had to clear off the trail. And while we're working on it, it's a good time for me to bring up item four on the no list, and that is no work. And by no work, I mean your job. The kind of work you see here, winching, clearing trails, chainsawing, recovery when, that, when a need for that arises, uh, axes, that's all good work. The kind of work we say no to really pertains to your job. We like to completely disconnect, be present, immerse ourselves in the activity that we're, that we're doing, and just have a ton of fun. So this was a pretty dense trail, and we drove over a lot of logs, and then soon we're at the next one that needed to be cleared. So as we're getting this log cleared out of the way, and as we work our way down this trail, I want to talk a little bit more about this philosophy of no destination, no established campsites, no hurry, no work. And I haven't got to the fifth no yet. But, you know, part of the fun really is just the exploration and the challenge of getting through difficult trails and the discovery along the way. Um, Sam and I once went up to, this was before we were filming, but we once went up to British Columbia um, and all we knew was where we were going to put in and you know we had a rough idea where we wanted to come out uh, and um, along the way we did some crazy stuff. We did some river crossings and discovered some old abandoned uh, shelters. Um, and just had, uh, you know, an adventure. And that concept of not knowing what's over the next rise is something that's always fascinated me. Anyway, but that's how we like to approach it. And of course, you do what's right for you. Here's a very tight section that Sam 
barely Hold on. got through. That's pretty close. Well, the side you can see, right? Yeah. As long as you're clear on this side, the other side's good. Hold on. Yep. Kick out's gonna go into action. It is. So let me make, go slow. Oh, 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 oh. Sam is really good at getting this vehicle through some tight places, but that's about as close as you can get. A little bit of rubber. So we decided nice to widen this section out just a little bit. No reason to add a dent to the pinstriping we were already putting on our vehicles. So I picked up the chainsaw and went at this, but you'll notice that my brother will start looking at me. And this is his, hey, I'm the chainsaw pro, give me the chainsaw look. So that tree that just fell, that was footage of a tree that Steve and I felled on his property back in March during the windstorm. Uh, he had to drop, I got it was probably more than 30 trees. And as you can see, he's really comfortable with the chainsaw and quickly widened the trail to get the vehicles through. I don't know why you guys thought that was so hard. All right, we got through the narrow section and now as we're driving over some more logs, we get to the number five no on the list and that is no driving only trips. So by that I mean don't just drive every day. For us, overlanding should be a launch pad to other activities, right? So take a mountain bike and go on some mountain bike rides, take a fishing pole, and I'll finish the thought on that. This river I wanted to show you, we stumbled upon this and as you'll see here, there's our camp set up. So we found a dispersed camping spot right on the river. This is Steve, his orange tent, and he's, as I said, right on the river. Uh, and we spent the evening there and it was absolutely fantastic. We got camp set up. Sam got some of the trail dust off of him. I tried to get a beer. <laughs> Apparently I don't know how to open them. Uh, and then we uh, got some dinner going. Tell me what you got there. So we've got some white meat chicken, some superfood salad, and a lovely roll. What do you got, Sammy? We got a steak on the barbie to be followed up with a Chipotle burrito. Now, let me tell you about my strategy. These just came out of the cooler slash fridge, so we didn't let it warm up to room temp. So what I'm doing is I got the bacon on the bottom, steak on top, and then more bacon on top of that. Slow cook it and not overcook the uh, and burn the edge. And I'm doing, I got potato, bacon, steak as well. Well, those steaks were great, and so were the beers, and we had some good laughs that evening telling overlanding stories. And this is us then taking off the next day. But uh, getting back to the kind of the launch pad concept, you know, take a mountain bike, take a fishing pole. If you're into hunting or other um, outdoor activities, uh, you know, take something along for that. Uh, explore a cave. There's all sorts of great hiking trail systems you can connect into. So, um, you know, don't just drive. Find other things to do. One of those other things I got to do was get my truck unstuck after I drove on top of this stump with my differential. John has got the pumpkin right on top of a stump that tires off the ground so the plan is what just need to get, lift the truck and get something under the tires drive right off so we've got the arb jack under the back sam's got traction boards on the ready big rocks so i'm busy you want the rocks to keep you up high Thing. 
keep that thing up. We'll give that a try. It's a quickie solution. If not, we'll do a better job. It stayed, this tire stayed up. So that's good. So I'm too lazy to dig that out. <laughs> but if this doesn't work, I will. Nice. Well done. Now, let's now this spot, you know, talk about no destinations, no um, established campgrounds. This is one of the best dispersed camping spots we found in a while. It's just a beautiful spot and it's on our maps for a future camp out. Um, so guys, those are the five no's and that's the approach for an easy, fun um, two or three day overlanding trip. And as I said, do what's right for you. This is what we like to do. It's all good fun, guys. Thanks for watching.